Hello, everyone. Welcome to Experts on Call, a brand new video series where I get to interview the experts in my network and share their wisdom with the world. Today, I'm with Dr. Mike Palfini. He's a Vistage Chair, a leadership team, effectiveness coach. So last couple of weeks ago, I was talking to Mike and he said, you know, I'm helping CEOs think and plan for the end of 2021. And I thought, Mike, we don't even know what we're doing tomorrow. <laughs> Can you help me with 2021? So that's why I invited him here. Uh, what challenges, Mike, are your CEOs facing? What's, what do you see on the horizon? Well, that, if I had the answer to, to what, well, I can tell you what I'm seeing, actually. What I'm seeing and what I'm hearing from people that uh, the CEOs and business owners, and thanks, by the way, Judy, for letting me be part of this. I'm, I'm thrilled. Um, is that there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty. And in fact, you know, the, the, the acronym VUCA comes to mind, you know, volatile, uncertain, complicated, ambiguous. But really the umbrella over all of that is this, this, um, this fog of uncertainty. Um, initially, when um, shelter in place was first put in place, uh, the, the CEOs and business owners with whom I work uh, there was a rush, a lot of, lot of very critical decisions that needed to be made around managing cash, deciding who, you know, what, what kinds of, of positions could be retained, who needed to be laid off, furloughed, um, salary reductions, all of those kinds of decisions. And, and that, that happened, you know, talk about volatile. I mean, there, were, there was that first week where where information was coming out by the hour, let alone by the day. Absolutely. And um, so that, that's, that was kind of the initial period. Then there seemed to be kind of a uh, settling in. Decisions were made. People were put in place. Everyone was assured, you know, they, they, they made sure that their, their uh, employees were healthy and uh, were safe and that they were set up to do the work they needed to do. And then it was kind of like, oh, let's get these applications in for the for the SBA loans, for the for the federal funds, that was another round of activity, and then it was kind of settling in to see what's going to happen. And the active part of that, though, was this kind of uh, of a loop of constant evaluating, making smaller decisions, communicating those decisions, and staying positive. And then that led to more evaluation and kind of a loop of activity. That continuous communication um, uh, has been critical for, for the business owners I work with to keep, keep alignment, keep people uh, engaged to the extent that they can. So the first one, make decisions, communicate decisions. Now, what was the third one? Well, the first thing was to evaluate circumstances evaluate, at any given yeah. time. Again, in the beginning, it was hourly, you know, then it yeah. became, you know, evaluate evaluate the circumstances of doing your business. And I've worked with people who are range from essential businesses now who are thriving to businesses that have needed to really, you know, try to survive. Um, no one has needed to surrender yet, which is, which is, you know, knock wood, which is great of the, of the business owners I'm working with um, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. But yeah, evaluate, decide, communicate, and really, um, you know, provide assurance for, for, um, for employees Got it. that okay. we're going to get through this. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So that's what you're seeing right now is this loop yeah. of evaluate, make decisions, communicate, provide assurance, evaluate again. So it's this continuous. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So how do you, how do you recommend CEOs think about planning for Q3, Q4 in 2021? Right. Eight yeah. Away, it, right. It's awkward. It's very awkward. Um, and we had conversations uh, most recently at our most recent meeting uh, late last week, uh, precisely on that topic. And really the way I would recommend um, business owners uh, approach that is to suspend, okay, assume we've got a tremendous amount of uncertainty, okay? That's a given. Now suspend that for a moment. Um, and this is kind of the awkward part. Um, have willful disregard for that level of uncertainty mm. and don't think about how instead access 
your imagination mm. to to define the what. What is in the exercise we did was I invited folks to think about what is one what are one or two things that you can do within that period, the second half of this calendar year, first quarter of 2021, uh, within that period that you can implement in your company that's going to help it to thrive. Um, and it was a very robust conversation. We had kind of broke into groups, had roundtable discussion, then can kind of report back out. And everyone came up with at least one or two things that they were going to focus on. Some of them were very, very basic. You know, I'm going to implement this software, you know, this new CRM that we've been dabbling yeah. with. And yeah. we're going to go, we're going to go full on with that okay. all the way to, all the way to, uh, I'm going to use this opportunity to, you know, uh, identify new talent uh, to bring into the company. Um, you know, and so, and, and, and lots of, lots of things, but the exercise was made possible because people weren't, in, uh, weren't encumbered by needing to think about how they were going to approach that. That will come. Absolutely. That will come. Later. And, uh, and we do need to, you know, move through this uncertain times and it's the companies that are able to be agile and, and um, can, and the leaders who can operate in a in this period of uncertainty and in some respects chaos sure. on a temporary basis and maintain their resilience uh -huh. uh, that that will be surviving and thriving. So suspend so uncertainty. Don't think about the how. Think about the what. And th and what was the third one? Um, use your imagination. Imagination. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Good. And how do you how do you work with clients? How do you help them through that? Is it one on one in a group? I know this is just yeah. a group. How yeah. Do, well, that's your... the peer the peer experience is 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 very powerful. And so these are private executive advisory boards uh, yeah. for people who who join them. It's an agenda free environment. Really, the only agenda is each other's uh, growth and success. And so. Uh, we we like to talk about gathering together like-minded people, like-minded from a strategic perspective. They think strategically, um, but they might be like-minded, but they all think differently. And so there's that diversity by design as well. So there's no no two industries represented in the group um, of the same industry. Um, and so people can be vulnerable with each other. They can they can really bring topics that are important topics that need different perspectives. There's, there's certain kinds of decisions that only business owners and CEOs can make that require different perspectives. And who do you turn to usually? And, um, and that's what this group provides. That peer group is exper experience is, is critical. And that's one of the ways that I work with CEOs and business owners. The other way is, is through one-to-one -one coaching. Uh -huh, well. Okay. Gosh, gosh, no agenda for, I think they're four hour meetings, right? Well, now they are. Um, typically, monthly? we meet face to face all day. Um, oh. we, we, yes. Um, so we've we've made adjustments in this virtual period where we're, yeah. we're meeting virtually. Yeah. Okay. Um, by 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 agenda, I mean no hidden agenda. We do have, <laughs> uh, you know, an agenda that we follow during the day. Oh, okay, got it. Time together. Yeah. And how many people are in a, in one cohort? Anywhere it ranges from twelve to sixteen. Got it. Yeah. And you're all doing uh, virtual. Right now, virtual meeting virtually. Can you give us a a client story, someone you've helped recently, and the results they've they've sure. seen? Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, well, I work with with again CEOs and senior executives as well. Um, you know, and the coaching that I do takes three forms, and I'll tell you a, a, a quick story about one one person. But the three forms is I, I act as a, a sounding board. Like if you have to just unpack what's in your head already and you need someone to hold on to what you're unpacking, that, that's a role that I can serve as a sounding board. I'm also a, a um, kind of a, a mentor advisor. So with your permission, if you need advice and it aligns with something I've experienced in my 35 plus years as a former CEO and executive myself, uh, I'll share that advice um, or, or open my network to you. 
And then the third, the third piece, which is really kind of gives me goosebumps to think about, um, I call the kaleidoscope effect. It's where we, you might be bringing a topic to me uh, that, that you're stuck on, and I'm stuck on it too. We both are sitting there looking at this topic and we don't really know the way through. And so by asking the right questions at the right time, um, sometimes, you know, when you, when you turn a kaleidoscope, you, the whole yeah. field of vision changes, yes. that happens. And we might not see the answer, mm -hmm. but we can see the path to the answer. And mm -hmm. so that's, that's the other thing. And, and, and so one CEO I was working with came to me as a new CEO, not new to the company, but new to her uh, role as CEO and was really approaching and struggling uh, in that role, um, struggling with how to be a leader as opposed to how to be the chief operating officer. You know, you, you're familiar with a certain flow of activity and, and areas that you deploy your attention onto. And when you're in a new role, it doesn't always flow naturally how to, sh how to make that shift. Yeah. And so we worked together for a couple of months. In the first couple of months, you know, I would ask questions like, why did you, she would talk about an activity she was engaged in and, and how she was struggling with it. And so why are you even doing that? Well, what do you mean? Well, don't you have someone who's responsible for that? Well, yeah. So the whole notion of delegating uh -huh. a topic. And so she learned how to delegate appropriately, delegate without just letting go of something, but delegate and then checking in. Um, mm -hmm. But the big, the big win for her was um, in, see, part of what I do is I help introverted leaders be successful in an extroverted world. And she was very introverted. I'm introverted. I had to learn how to be extroverted, you know? And so one of the ways that you need to be extroverted is you have to be able to speak in front of groups of people, employees, st other stakeholders. Yep. And so she had an opportunity to speak uh, in an industry association meeting and she was gonna pass it by. I said, why? Why would you do that? Well, I just, and, she said, okay, I'll try. And she did. And she spoke. I said, just speak what's in your heart and what you know to be true. She did. And it got rave reviews. And she, she, she identified that as kind of a seminal moment for her experience as a CEO. And, and now kind of, I talk about it as kind of like trying on a new coat yeah. to get comfortable with it. And she, she, she's comfortable in her new coat now. Wow. So you should, you questioned her delegation, her uh, regular ways of doing things, and you challenged her to open yeah. up to new experiences she would probably never have come up with. Yeah. Yeah, it's not an always comfortable conversation with me, you know, because yeah. I am going to challenge you. But, you know, there's, there's, there's trust that gets developed, and, and part of what the people I work with on a one-to-one -one basis and in the peer groups are looking for is that, mm -hmm. is that challenge a challenge um, yeah being being challenging in a caring way you know being challenging otherwise in a caring way. you don't need people just to say you know to agree with you you can get right. that anywhere yes know. especially at the top right <laughs> right <laughs> cool thank you for sharing okay so we live in a buka world <clears throat> to navigate through this uncertain time suspend uncertainty yeah a little bit don't think about the how and use our imagination. Yes. That's how that's how to look long term into 2021. My goodness. Yeah, I mean, obviously things become more certain. Like we just had the the new order take place yesterday, uh, where shelter in place is going to extend for another month. Yep. So now that that takes care of that's gonna define the nature of the next conversations I'm having with Sure. People I work with, you know, yeah. because now we know that. Yep. That's no longer uncertain. And so that's going to kick into place some more decisions. It's that loop you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Evaluate, make decisions, communicate decisions, and provide assurance. And then yeah. do it all over Critical again. part. <laughs> Critical part of, of, uh, of, of the role of the leader is to is to be the communicator and and it it is a loop it is a loop um and it's you know what i found in my experience is that um 
it's effective when it when it's authentic. It's effective and, when it's authentic. And, yeah. And it's a simple formula, but not an easy one to follow because it's difficult. It's not easy to stay hopeful as a as a as a leader sometimes, uh, particularly when you're needing to make difficult decisions. It's not easy. And so you really it's an inside job. It's wow. it's not for the faint of heart. Got it. Wow, you know, that's and, and, yeah. that's totally a, 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 we can do part two of this for that topic. Sure. Ooh. Love to do that. Yeah. How would you like folks to get in contact with you? What's well, my mobile number is uh, is my main contact uh, number is uh, 415-250-4139. Uh, my email address is mike at michaelpelfini.com. At Michael Pelfini. Yes. And that's my website address as well, michaelpelfini.com. Very good. All right. Here, I'm going to put it. Are my notes from today? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Great. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Judy. Really oh, appreciate it. Oh, 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 my gosh. I think we need more of this on a regular basis, like you said, checking in, evaluating, making decisions, communicating, providing assurance as leaders yeah. and CEOs. Really appreciate you sharing your expertise. 35 years. Yay. You, I think you have a few things to share. Thank you. <laughs> and the scars. Uh, I still have the scars, too. So. <laughs> Thanks so much. Okay, Judy. Thank you very much.